Okay, today we're going to talk about no foreigners need apply. So we talked about um, the reasons for people coming and immigrating to America uh, two days ago. Yesterday we talked about how difficult it was for these uh, immigrants, what kind of lifestyle they were leading. Uh, but now we're going to see another side of the problems with immigration. And uh, basically it has to do with businesses. Businesses would take advantage of immigrants, politicians. Um, sometimes it benefited the immigrants, sometimes it didn't. Um, but another group of people that we really haven't talked about very much are people that are already here in the United States. So all these jobs that uh, immigrants are coming in for, the immigrants are very desperate. They want any kind of job just to put anything on the table and, and live and just survive. So they're not looking for a high salary. Americans that are already here have a decent salary and they want to keep that salary. And if a business owner can say, well, if you're not willing to work for as little as what an immigrant is and live the way that they do, which nobody wants to do, then you're fired. And so this is going to cause a lot of uh, strain between uh, nativist Americans and immigrants. And uh, we'll go into it more here. So a lot of times people are going to discriminate against uh, obvious immigrants because of things that I just talked about. They don't think that they're really Americans. They don't know the culture. They have a different culture. If they got voting rights, then uh, you know they might vote for their home country instead of what's best for Americans. So people are very suspicious and very uh, apprehensive about all these people coming in and uh, taking their jobs and voting and so forth. So as we talked about yesterday, um, places like Chinatown, uh, Little Italy, these were ethnic areas where uh, immigrants would gather. Chinese people would go to Chinatown because they all spoke the same language. They trusted each other more. Little Italy, all the Italians would gather in one area of Manhattan and uh, for the same exact reasons. And so they, they would help them get jobs, and a lot of the jobs that were open to um, immigrants were jobs that really nobody wanted to do, very dangerous jobs like working in mines or in factories that, that uh, uh, you know, like a steel mill where you can have explosions or, or molten uh, metals uh, are just dangerous to be around, and, and anybody can get hurt. And back then there were no protections. You got hurt, you got disabled, that's tough luck, you're fired and they found another immigrant to replace that person. And so things were getting um, worse and worse uh, for workers in this country, and people started to blame immigrants. And because they started blaming immigrants, they wanted to uh, set up laws against the immigrants. So in the 1920s, they had Congress pass new laws that put strict limits on the number of people from each country that can come in. In fact, it was so bad that, uh, and we talked about this in the last chapter, in 1882, the Chinese Exclusion Act, which basically said no more Chinese can come into this country. And so they would put all these restrictions on the amount of people that can come in to the country to try to control, first of all, the pressures of what was happening in the labor market, but also to make sure that these people get assimilated and start voting in an American way instead of all of a sudden a bunch of German people come in and then they, wanted, they want to Germanize the entire country. This is a fear that a lot of Americans had. So the immigrants, they made sure their kids went to school. They started banding together. Um, a lot like what we saw in chapter two and chapter five where African American communities saw that if they were going to succeed, they needed to work together within their community. And so Italians would work together, Chinese would work together uh, for their, their um, ethnic group, Germans would gather together. That's why they would get into these neighborhoods uh, where they can coordinate and look out for each other, look out for each other's kids, look out for their education, try to help people get better jobs. And so they would, um, form groups that would help in this, this effort. Uh, but a big problem would come in when we're dealing with 
the political machine. Now, I know we've, go through, we've gone through a lot of controversy the last couple of elections in, in America, but this is nothing new. This is not, you know, where America was so virtuous that we never had any election fraud or any problems. And during this time with so many immigrants coming in that the politicians would try to get them registered to vote and then vote in their favor. Remember, all these communities are working together. They're tight-knit. If you can get, as a politician, into the Italian community, into the Chinese community and say, hey, look, I want you to vote for me and... If I'm elected, I'm going to get you jobs. I'm going to get you money. I'm going to get you better housing. I'm going to do these things for you. And they would make promises to these immigrants. And, you know, things are so bad for, for the immigrants. They're like, okay, well, let's give it a shot. And they would vote for these politicians. And this gave rise to the political machine. And the political machine is basically what I just mentioned, where you vote for me and I'll, I'll make sure that you personally profit from it, which is a form of corruption. But they would also do anything in order to get elected. They would cheat. They would st uh, stuff the ballot box with extra ballots. They would uh, intimidate other voters. They would uh, have people vote two, three, four times uh, in an election. Um, you know, there was, there was a joke about, you know, you look over here, the main person of Tammany Hall, uh, Boss Tweed, uh, was one of the more famous corrupt politicians. And they, they wrote a little uh, song. They said, under his, under his rule, the ballot box was freed. Six times as big a vote he could record as there were people living in the ward. So, you know, there's, let's say, 100 people are living in a neighborhood, and then the, the voting box has 600 votes in it. Obviously, that's not correct. You can't have 600 people uh, voting in a place where only 100 people live. But that's what they would do. They would stuff the ballot box with as many ballots as they could, and their response to people would say, hey, wait a minute, you're cheating. They would say, well, what are you going to do about it? And once they were elected, they were in power, and they can make the uh, investigation go away. And so a lot of political corruption takes place during this time because the immigrants are coming in, and they are influencing these uh, neighborhoods to not only vote for them, but in some cases just flat-out cheat. So, you know, what we're going through now, all the things that are being alleged, they're being alleged because this is what uh, can happen in America and has happened in the past. We, we have a history of, of political corruption, of voter fraud, and uh, it's a very serious problem.